Welcome to the Mechanics of Solids lecture series. In this series of videos, we're looking at examples using Generalized Hooke's Law. Our lesson objectives are to apply Generalized Hooke's Law to a plane stress state to evaluate strains as a function of stress. The second objective is to interpret strain rosette data to determine normal and shear strains at a point in the body and apply Hooke's Law to determine the corresponding stresses. First example, we have a rectangular plate subjected to normal stresses sigma x and sigma y in the x and y direction of 67 and negative 23 megapascals respectively. The plate dimensions are 400 by 550 by 20 millimeters. The elastic modulus is 200 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio is 0.3. We're asked to find the maximum in-plane shear strain gamma max and the volume change delta v. We'll concentrate first on the maximum in-plane shear strain and um, we'll compute it a, d a couple of different ways. Note that we could start by starting with the normal stresses and computing the normal strains in the x and y direction and then transform to the maximum shear strain using Moore's circle of strain. In this case the approach is to calculate epsilon x from the equation 1 over e times sigma x minus nu over e times sigma y. That equation for uh, generalized Hooke's Law, the stress to strain form is fairly easy to remember. Uh, so 1 over elastic modulus, I'm going to convert to megapascals, 200,000 megapascals times sigma x 67 megapascals. So notice that leads to a unitless quantity, which is what I want for strain minus Poisson's ratio 0 0.3 over E, 200,000 megapascals, times sigma y, which is negative 23 megapascals. Then double negative makes a positive, and so this computes to a mm, positive number 3.695 times 10 to the negative 4, and it's unitless. So that is the result for epsilon x. Epsilon y, just a slight change to the formula, negative nu over e times sigma x, sigma x plus 1 over e times sigma y, which would be negative 0 0.3 over 200,000 megapascals times 67 megapascals plus 1 over 200,000 megapascals times negative 23 megapascals. This computes to a negative 2.155 times 10 to the negative fourth and it's unitless and it's negative because both of the terms were negative. Okay so now using Moore's circle of strain. We haven't had a lot of emphasis but we said that we can uh, compute an equivalent Moore's circle where uh, epsilon x epsilon y and gamma xy over 2 are the properties on Moore's circle. Okay, This is a biaxial strain state. We don't have any shear strains, so therefore we can conclude that epsilon uh, p1 is equal to epsilon x and epsilon p2 is equal to epsilon y, which means we have a Moore's circle of strain that looks like this with the 3.695 and the negative 2.155 out here. Those are our principal strains. And our maximum shear strain, gamma max over 2, would be somewhere up there. Okay, formula for gamma max over 2 is the radius of the circle, epsilon x minus epsilon y over 2. Okay, so I can conclude gamma max equals epsilon x minus epsilon y, 3.695 my, uh, minus a negative, so plus 2.155 times 10 to the minus 3, or sorry, 10 to the minus 4, and that leaves me with 5.85 times 10 to the minus 4. This is gamma max. Okay? So as I said, that's, that's one approach. 
Uh, since we didn't have a lot of emphasis on more circle of strain, another possibility for approaching this problem that you might be more comfortable with is to first convert um, the normal stress into a maximum shear stress and then compute the shear strain uh, from the shear stress based on Hooke's law in shear. Okay, so let's proceed with that approach. Again, we have the recognition that this is a biaxial stress state. There's no shear stress. So therefore, sigma P1 is equal to sigma X, and sigma P2 is equal to sigma Y. And we have a Mohr circle with sigma and tau. I didn't label that for strain. Uh, Mohr circle with the principal stress, sigma P1, out here at 67, and sigma P2 out here at negative 23 makes a more circle like that where the maximum shear stress tau max would be the radius of the circle tau max equal to sigma p1 minus sigma 2 over 2 or sigma x minus sigma y over 2 so this is equal to 67 minus a negative 23 over 2 which is going to compute to 45 and the, and the units are megapascals so that's tau max. Now from tau max, we could calculate gamma max equals tau max over g. Okay, We weren't given g, but remember the relationship between g and the elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio. g is equal to e over 2 times 1 plus Poisson's ratio. So 200 gigapascals divided by 2 times 1 plus 0.3. That's going to give a number about 76.9 gigapascals, or 76,900 76, megapascals. Let's use that, okay? So finally, gamma max equals tau max, 45 megapascals, divided by g, 76,900 megapascals which the result is 5.85 times 10 to the negative 4 and it's unitless and if you recall that is the same answer we got using the other approach okay so either approach will work uh, both a good demonstration of um, more circle transformations as well as applying stress strain relations and the answers certainly Computing it two different ways is a good sanity check. I'll go ahead and compute the volume change in the next video.